Welcome to, I almost said midweek live, we've been calling essential work. Hey everybody, uh, glad that you're here with us tonight. I see that several of you are already uh, streaming with us and I'd love for you to um, to comment and share and you guys talk to each other in the in the comments there. Also, please share with me your prayer requests. We're going to spend some time praying together before we get done. We've got a great conversation between um, Kayla and Garrett and I that we're going to share with you in just a minute. Um, got into evolution and dinosaurs and all kinds of stuff, and so I think you'll really enjoy that. Um, but tonight, uh, before we jump into there, I want to introduce to you somebody very special to me. I have a special guest with me tonight. It is Sam Stevens. Hey, Sam. What's up? Hey, look. Look who just uh, said hey to me. You want to say hey to her? Hey, Mima. How you doing? <laughs> His grandma just commented. I bet she didn't even know you were going to be on. Did you tell her? I did not. Oh, okay. I, not. All right. I think she checks her Facebook pretty frequently, though. So. Uh, yeah, she, she gets on Facebook from time to time. Yeah. Yeah, so thanks for sitting in with me for a minute, man. Hey, it's my pleasure. My yeah. Pleasure. Pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Do you That's think it. I'm frozen on the stream? Uh-oh. What happened? I don't know. I don't know either. Why are you... Um, you want to go check your camera? Yeah. And I'll keep talking? So uh, something happened with uh, with Sam's camera there, so he's going to go see if he can figure out what it was. But, uh, yeah, yeah, so glad you guys are uh, tuned in. Karen and do what? It's not the camera. No? The camera's on? Okay. Well, maybe we can uh, maybe we can figure it out. So I'll tell you what, why don't you turn it off and turn it back on, okay? There he is. How's that look? There's a, there's a nice look out of Sam right there. <laughs> so uh uh yeah so we're uh we're excited to have you guys with us please share your prayer requests um and let us know how you're doing um and we're going to try and get sam back on here in just a minute so uh, once you get it back on there sam just let me know and we'll uh we'll try you out um so uh one of the things that uh, i wanted to talk with sam about and we can just do it while he's trying to fix his uh his camera there um, which looks like it is still frozen, so I'm not sure. Uh, not sure what we got going on with you, Sam, but that's okay. Uh, we'll um, we'll figure it out. Did you? Is it look like it's on over there? Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. All right, we'll do this. Come sit by me, buddy. I would love to. Come on in. Scoot on in here, man. <laughs> there we go. We can share a mic and everything. Hi. Hi. Can you can you get in a little closer? This is nice. Look, we never we never spend time like this. Oh, my baby. Thank you. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So make sure you stay in the camera here. Um, so yeah, I think we've uh, we've got us in here together now. So we'll just go like this. Yeah. Hopefully everybody can hear us. So um, so tell me what's going on with you, Sam. Let everybody in on what's happening in college life. You're going to college, right? Yeah. I'm Harvard going to college. No, not Harvard. Where are you? Going? I haven't heard back from them yet. Yeah. Um, I'm at CSU. Um, just finished midterms, which are not fun. Um, what are you studying? Studying business. Business. Yeah. Studying because you're gonna be a. Are you gonna be a businessman? Suit and tie businessman. Yeah. I'm so proud of you, buddy. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. So other than uh, CSU and studying business, what's keeping you busy? Um, so working at Chick Fil A, um, we got the the music school, music academy. Oh yeah, yeah, we're, that's booming. We got a lot of students and stuff. I'm uh, I'm excited about that. That's a pretty cool thing for our church to have a uh, music school. You know, we got a lot of musical talent here, and it's one of the things that um, that people kind of know us for is having a great. Um, great music but so all that talent you play with the band i do and uh, we got a couple other musicians you've been um, working with justin and garrett you've been teaching them some things i have i have they're still getting there but yeah. one day they'll hopefully be on my level all right well yeah keep working with them yeah. um they need uh they need all the help they can get but we do have we do have the music school and uh maybe you didn't know that uh, we've got a music academy and you can learn all kinds of instruments. Uh, you teach several instruments. Yeah. Um, Justin teaches can teach any instrument. If you any. want to learn nose flute or gym gym, what's a didgeridoo? Didgeridoo. <laughs> whatever, whatever you want to learn, uh, Justin can teach you that. Uh, actually, we've got a little commercial that you can uh, you can probably find it back on our Facebook, and you can share it out if you know want if you know somebody who wants to uh, to learn music. Um, it doesn't matter what age you are. Check this out. Nice. 
So all you got to do is go to the website, right? Yeah. And uh, get signed up and come here or to Mount Zion location. We, we're giving lessons at both places, yeah. just depending on what the lesson is and the convenience for the student and stuff. We'll work with your schedule. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So you're enjoying that? You enjoying giving lessons? I am. I am. I'm learning. Sometimes I'm learning with the student. I'm giving drum lessons. Yeah? Yeah. I've never been much of a drummer, but... Um, that you don't... You don't say that when you're advertising. Well, no, 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 no. Like I've I've learned to give drum lessons. I'm I'm continuing on with the student. You know. I got you. Well, somebody told me that to um, to teach, all you have to do is be one step ahead of the student. Exactly. Yeah. One one step ahead. That's what I used to tell people um, about homeschooling. You know, you you have some experience with homeschooling. I do actually. Right. Yeah. And so people used to say, "Well, oh, you can't homeschool your kids. They're going to turn out to be weird," and they were right. Um, but mm. They said, well, how, you know, I can never teach my kid. You know, I, can, I don't know how to teach my kid. I don't know what they're... And all you got to do is be one step ahead. So you just got to read the lesson the night before. And then, eventually, you're going to get to some place where you just don't know how to do whatever they're doing. And you just send them some video, right? Yeah. And yeah. all night school, and they teach themselves. That's right. And then they turn out to be weirdos. Yeah. Homeschool weirdos. Do you, do you regret your homeschool education? Do you wish that you had gone to real school Nah, other schools won't let you do your schoolwork in pajamas, so that was always a plus for me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And you got away with a lot. I think it's not like uh, it's not like it was too tough on you, right? Nah, it was pretty. It's pretty easy. Okay. Got a pretty open schedule. Well, cool. Well, um, well, good deal, man. So, uh, just want to let folks know about one more thing that's coming up before we get into that discussion, and that is we've got uh, trunk or treat coming. We decided we we thought long and hard about it and decided we're going to do trunk or treat this year. Um, and so hopefully you can participate. It's going to be on October 31st, which is Halloween night. We're going to have right here in our parking lot at Eastern Heights. We're going to have trunks uh, lying in the parking lot, and you can sign up. And actually what you need to do is you need to sign up with me. You can comment tonight and say, I want to have a trunk and a trunk or treat, and I'm signing up with Matt. We're having a little competition with the staff. Did you oh, know really? that? Yeah, to, so we're trying to see who can sign up the most trunks. So there's like two competitions. It's kind of like um, first fish, big fish. So the first person to sign up five trunks wins a prize, and then the person who signs up the most trunks before October 31st wins a prize. Wow. And so if you sign up, you have to note that Matt is the person you want to give credit to. So go ahead and just comment right mm -hmm. here, and I'll get you signed up. Um, but um, I need you, we need you to bring candy for that, because what's trunk or treat without candy, Sam? It's just a bunch of trunks, a bunch of people sitting around in the parking lot. Yeah, with dumb costumes on. Exactly. Right. We need candy. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite candy? I'm a Kit Kat kind of guy. Really? Yeah. All right. Well, let's see if we have any Kit Kat. <laughs> job out of my favorite son there it was Rut. I'm just kidding I love you the most um, so yeah good job out of Russ and uh, and Garrett putting that thing together I think uh, I think Kayla was standing on a ladder yeah. dropping the candy on his head so uh, so bring your candy tell everybody to bring their candy bring your candy how, please. tell them how important it is it, beg please bring your candy Okay. Halloween without candy is not Halloween. It's not. It's not. You know that um, in several places they're trying to cancel um, trunk or treat. How dare they? For um, for concerns about coronavirus, COVID nineteen, and um, so. But my thought is, uh, you know. Halloween's when you wear a mask, right? Exactly. Everybody should be wearing a mask, you know, even if you don't wear one. Like, we're not wearing a mask. We're pretty close right here. Yeah. But Halloween, you wear a mask, whether it's Batman or Ninja Turtle or... What are you going as this year? Um, I haven't I haven't really thought much about that yet. So right, well, do you have any it, recommendations? Give it some thought. I, well, um, why don't you and I go together, all right? And we can be... Um, what's a good duo 
Batman and Robin. Yogi and Boo Boo. Yogi and Boo Boo. Hey, Boo Boo. Hey. We could do um, Raggedy Ann and Andy. I think that would be cute. What is that? Um, you don't know? Oh, that's an old thing. That's old. We could go as uh, um, Shrek and Donkey. You be the donkey. Mm. All right? I don't know. Do you guys have any suggestions of what uh, Sam and I could go for for Halloween as a duo? Please comment and let us know. Um, Sam, thanks for sitting in. We're gonna uh, we're gonna have some prayer at the end of this thing, and maybe we'll get your camera figured out. Um, so you guys hang on through uh, the conversation that we're gonna have. It's a really good conversation. Um, we got into dinosaurs and evolution and stuff, so we'll we'll get into that um, now. And uh, hang on till the end. We'll be back here to pray together. I'm ready. If you guys are ready, y'all ready? Let's go. All right, let's do it. So what's up? Hey, now. <laughs> Everything is up. Everything is up. Everything is up. Yeah. Stock market's up. I checked my retirement <laughs> a little while ago, and the up small amount cents. that I have in there is Everything just a little bit higher. Up roses. <laughs> that's right. That's right. We are in a good time in this world. Everybody else thinks we're in a down time. Everybody else thinks that there's so much chaos in the world, and we're just all headed to, you know, heck in a handbasket. <laughs> But I am determined to have a more positive outlook on life. What about you guys? Absolutely. Let's do that. Let's spread some positive vibes to everybody. Life is great. You know what, Kayla? How are you doing? I am thriving. There you go. That's exactly what you were supposed to say. I am thriving. That's how life is. Awesome. That's what I wanted to hear. That's what I wanted to hear. Are you thriving, Garrett? I'm thriving as well. Nice. Nice. (laughs) Why wouldn't we be? We are a blessed bunch of folks all sitting here yes, in our purple shirts. Um, <laughs> this yeah. is not planned. But sure, I it was. Like I it. no. Now I texted all of you last night. I said, "Wear purple. Okay. Wear the purplest thing you got, sure. and we're gonna do purple. It's a whole purple theme. <laughs> Royalty you got? of God." And we'll see, you, there just, you, go. you got boring. You, you got boring plaid. What you got on your shirt, Kayla? I got um, Journey seventy nine tour. Ah, fancy. That's cool. I've got, this is a local friend of mine uh, who builds guitars, and this is a, a Damcaster shirt, yeah, which he made get uh, it. Telecaster guitars. For the guitar players, you know this, but um, out of the damn wood, Whoa. <laughs> the wood Easy. from the dam <laughs> oh, okay. that was torn down in Columbus, old history. The damn wood. I All mean, right. come on. Like, we're going to have to put an explicit I, tag on this. For so long. D A M. Wood, all right. I thought that shirt said Dreamcasters for so long. No, but it's really cool, really cool, uh, really cool story, and uh, really good friends. So, really awesome guitars. Yeah, they're uh, cool looking. I mean, that yeah. old wood. It's uh, well, uh, like wood from you know early 1800s or something like that. Or yeah. Would you like to give your friend a shout out? Yeah, Sylvan Guitars in Columbus, Georgia. Frank Schley for all your this guitar needs. This episode of Essential Work is brought to you by Sylvan Guitars. That's right. <laughs> No, uh, yeah, he does great Have work. Have your guitar built from the ground up. There you go. Yep. Already got his, uh, his, uh, his what, soundtrack. Oh, that was a, uh, I got yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a minute. Took me a minute. That was a Garrett Lee lyric reference right there. Nice. Nice work. So, uh, so yeah, so um, I'm glad to hear you guys are thriving. Yes. I am. I'm, I'm excited about that. Anything, um, anything specific that is bringing about this thriving in your life? I mean, any, you know, any new habits, any any new things coming your way? Did you just get a big check from uh, from the lottery <laughs> or the government or something? I mean, what happened? I wish. But what I have been doing is I've been consistently cooking my food. Yeah. Which has been great. It saved me money. Yeah. And it's a, oh, and I have an incredible story. All right. Okay. <laughs> so I'm in Walmart. I'm grocery shopping, right? My credit card has been doing this thing. I think it's just old. Declining like, because yeah, you don't like have it any just money. Won't, yeah, it won't <laughs> take the you know the machine or whatever. They have to like type it in. So I went through self checkout like an idiot, not thinking about this issue. And I called the cashier over. I was like, I went through self checkout. I'm so sorry. I forgot that my you know my card has this issue. And she's like, <clears> Oh, <throat> it's probably just the machine. So she voids out my purchase and she takes me to like the register in the self checkout and she, you know, scans the receipt and I'm trying my card. I'm like, I'm telling you, it's not gonna work. You have to type it in. 
And she's like, just give it another try, blah, blah, blah. There's this lady next to me, and we're going to call her Piedmont Lady because she had a Piedmont tag on, but I forgot the name on the tag. But she's th- she's standing next to me doing her self checkout, and she's like, "Well, how much is it?" The total is like eighty something dollar, and she eighty something dollars. Sorry, and she goes, "Do you mind if I just pay for it?" Wow, that's cool. And she paid for my food. How incredible! Is that's that cool. not cool? Yeah, that's that, awesome. That is cool. She was like, "Just pay it forward." So pay I had to forward. I had to find a way to pay it forward. Yeah, you just give me eighty dollars. No. Pretty um, easy. <laughs> I have to pay it for it to somebody in need. Yeah, I, I could use eighty dollars. <laughs> Who couldn't use? That's $80? nice. Yeah, isn't it's that cool? Very nice. Very nice. I wonder if she posted it on Facebook. I doubt it. <laughs> well, she didn't take a picture of me, so. Let me get, hold on. Let me get a picture of us. <laughs> with the, yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh man. my gosh, guys! You never believe what will happen. I just paid for this lady's groceries. Oh. Uh, well, that's cool. That's nice. Yeah. Nice. And she bought you all the stuff that you used to make your, your fancy breakfast this morning. Actually, that breakfast was a fail, but I'm still thriving. <laughs> I tried to force myself to eat eggs, and I don't like eggs, and I just couldn't do it. Man, I cook sausage and eggs near about every morning. Really? Near about every morning. You and then go by Duncan? <laughs> I, don't, I don't go there every day. But I do like their coffee. No, he has he has sausage and breakfast in the morning, smoky pig for lunch. <laughs> Garrett likes his routine. <sighs> a very routine person. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, um, awesome. Well, I've been trying to to cook at home more. We've been trying to go home for lunch more, save a little money. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we are uh, about to be homeless. Did you guys know that? You guys yeah. out there don't know that. We are um Maybe we're you really do need that eighty dollars, huh? That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah, so a bit of an announcement. The Stevens are moving. Stevens are moving. Um don't know where to. Uh but we have got a contract <laughs> on our house. We've been trying to sell the house and uh so we're gonna try and downsize a little bit. You know, we're looking forward to our kids moving out um soon. <laughs> you know, trying to trying to uh, you know Rush him out the door. Uh, Christy doesn't agree with that, but um, but yeah. So we're uh, we're looking to downsize a little bit, and we don't know where we're gonna go. But we got a contract on the house. Clarification: They will still be in Columbus. They're not leaving, as <laughs> in they're not moving to a different city or church. Yeah, church for sure. I don't know where we're gonna live. I mean, I can't guarantee any of that. So mm-hmm. could be a different city. Who knows? Phoenix City, Smith Station, <laughs> yeah, Fort Mitchell, Casita. Casita. <laughs> we got some of our folks living in Casita. Waverly Hall. How do you say it like that? Waverly Hall. It's, it's a... Yubadoy. It's a indigenous... Yubadoy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Christy used to live in a place called uh, Unadilla. <laughs> Unadilla. It's like Quesadilla. Yeah, well, I mean, I think you're supposed to say it. Unadilla. Unadilla. Unadilla, but nobody there says Unadilla. They say... And I like and we lived in we also lived in Vienna, spelled Vienna. Mm-hmm. So, so I don't know where we'll be living. Um, we might be this couch that Garrett's uh, sitting on. One of us might be sleeping there. There's possibly. a few couches around. This yeah, church. we got a few couches around the church. So, um, we'll just have to. Um, if I smell a little bit, it's because there's no shower here. So, um, but there is in the kids' building. Oh, that's right. That's right. We did. There fix, you go. We Move did fix up. Church. We did fix up that shower. So. so I saw Sam, your son, in the hallway yesterday, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm putting my stuff up here <laughs> in this room." <laughs> yeah, I told him. <laughs> I told him. You know, we don't know where we're going, but get all your stuff packed up in boxes, label it, and just whatever you need for the next, you know, possibly months. You know, a couple <laughs> of months. Have like you're going on vacation. Have it in a luggage. And be ready to go. I don't know, you know, you know, they got a lot of, of Airbnbs um, here in Columbus because there's a lot of military. So people move here and have to find a house. Mm-hmm. So maybe we'll do that for a month or a few weeks or I don't know. We're looking for a house. We're looking for if you have a house, a nice house. If you know uh, anyone. Yeah. Well, you know, inexpensive, nice backyard. You'd like to give it to your pastor. <laughs> Whatever. So, uh, no. so yeah, we're we're on the lookout, and uh, we're we're trying to find trying to find a spot. 
So, uh, so that's what's going on with us, and a lot of things. You know, we're trying to get all the deal done. We got a few little repairs. We gotta, gotta make uh, happen in the meantime. But looking forward to that happening all the week of the election. It's gonna all happen. The week of the election. We excited about the election in here? Anybody uh, getting any notifications on their phone or Too I mean, many. text I'm messages? Tired. Oh, sure. I'm so tired of people telling me to vote. I get a lot of text messages about it. Like, yeah, me too. It's it's uh, I get at least two every day. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's because some places are voting early right now or something. I have a friend that's in Nashville. He's like, I voted. I'm like, yeah. really? <laughs> huh. Well, I told y'all I'm not voting, right? I, I don't think Our I. I don't think I mentioned it 20, like I outside of you guys, but anyway, I'm abstaining. Go ahead. What were you saying? Oh, I was just telling Gary. Our early vo- early voting starts like the twentieth, I think. Hmm. All right. Yeah. But, um, yeah, Matt's decided not to participate. I'll in. probably do early voting just because I wouldn't want to get Be out on the day, you know. You want to get out and mix it up with the people? Yeah, you know? spread that. <laughs> spread those germs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do we hear? <laughs> we got a we got a bass player above us. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. Maybe nobody will notice. If you hear a little bass music above us, that is... Uh, that is the Joey Roberts uh, playing a little bass above us. Yeah. So that's the music that stirs Kayla's heart. <laughs> Clearly. All right. Let's quit messing around. Let's get into our Bible study, our study of theology and doctrine. We've been memorizing these questions and answers to learn about God so it'll transform the way that we live. And so now have you guys absolutely got these questions down? I am just amazed at my ability to memorize this old. I'm so old. You guys know how old I am, right? Four. Yes, we know. 43? That right? 45. 45? Oh, that's right. Yeah, 45. That's right. Married to an older woman. Uh, we won't mention that uh, any more than that. So, um, But, uh, yeah, so I've been, I've been amazed. And all I've been, all I've been doing is just in the morning, um, I read my Bible, or listen to my Bible, and then I open up that app, and one time I go through the questions. So I go through the ones we've already done, and then through the new one, and it's just just kind of absorbing it, just yeah. seeing it every day. Um, so it hadn't been a ton of effort. Um, now watch me mess up and not be able to remember anything right. today. So so let's um, so let's review our questions. Let's just show everybody how smart you guys are. All right. So the first question is, uh, <coughs> what is I'm going to try and remember the questions, too. All right? I'm going to really try and show off. So without looking at my notes, um, what is our only hope in life and death? Somebody will raise their hand to answer that one. What's our only hope in life and death? Garrett has raised his hand. He wants to go. Did you answer that one last time? I don't remember. Okay. Maybe. All right. Well, go ahead, Garrett. Um, That we are not our own, but in life and death. Death and body and soul belong to God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. All right. That we are not our own, but belong, body and soul, both in life and death, to God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Good job, Garrett. Nice work out of you, bud. All right. So the next question was, what is God? What is God? It's kind of an interesting way to ask that, but we're really getting the basics of understanding uh, what God is, who God is, and just think about somebody who maybe has no theological knowledge, no framework. That's where we're coming at these questions, laying basic foundational principles so somebody can understand what God is, who God is, these concepts. Kayla, you want to answer that question? Yes. All right. God is the creator and sustainer of everyone and everything. He is eternal, infinite, and unchangeable in power and perfection, goodness and glory, wisdom, truth and justice. Nothing happens except through him and his will. I wasn't watching her. Did she peek? I don't think so. I think she was tempted to, but I think she kept staring at the the edge of the table instead of the TV. (laughs) Garrett giving you a little cover there. All right. Very good. Very good. 
All right, so uh, so what is God? And so the next question was, how many persons are there in God? How many persons are there in God? And uh, there are three persons in the one true and living God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. They're the same in substance, equal in power and glory. Did I get that right? Let's yes. see. How many persons are there in God? I got these out of order. Uh, there are three persons in one true living God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I did pretty good. Good job. Nice work, Matt. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, excellent. So uh, so this is uh, the question we did last week, right? Mm-hmm. Um, how and why did God create us? How and why did God create us was our question last week. Who feels really strong about this one? Who wants to take this one? I feel strong enough to take it. All right, awesome. Go for it. How and why did God create us, Kayla? God created us, male and female, to know him, love him, live with him, and in his glory, and it is right (laughs) for us who was created by God to, to live to his glory. <laughs> strong. Close. You, you, you were so strong. I started strong. Uh, but you, you ended know. strong, too. You started and ended strong. Um, so how and why did God create us is the question. God created us, male and female, in his own image, to know him, love him, Live with him and glorify him, and it is right for those who are created by God to glorify him. Right? All right, and so there's there's so much, in, and we've been talking each week. We've been trying to have a little discussion around these questions so we can kind of bring in a few of the principles, but there really is a lot in each question if you kind of dig into to, um, to each part. That, you know, being made in the image of God, being made to glorify him. I mean, you can take a few weeks and study each part of what that means, but we're getting these foundational principles. And so um, so let's introduce um, this week's question. This week's question is, what else did God create? What else did God create? So now we've already said that God created male and female, created man and woman in his own image, right? To, to know him, to love him, to live with him, to glorify him. All right, so what else did God create? What else did God create? And, you know, kind of, if you just had to answer that without looking at these questions, what would you say? Everything. Everything, right? <laughs> everything. And so that would, if you... Um, if Except you, one thing. <laughs> but um, everything, yeah. So God created all things, right? And mm-hmm. so now when we, when we look at the answer, remember that we're trying to get some foundational principles in here. So everything, every piece of the wording of these answers is chosen very specifically to help us um, then uh, introduce bigger principles or to learn more about these, uh, these foundational principles later on. So here's the answer. God created all things by his powerful word. Did you see word is capitalized there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So God created all things by his powerful word, and all his creation was very good. Everything flourished or thrived All right. Mm-hmm. under his loving rule. All right, one more time. God created all things by his powerful word, and all his creation was very good. Everything flourished under his loving rule. So this week we're talking about not just us being made in the image of God, but all things being made in the image of God. There's, not everybody believes that everything, the world, the universe, was made by God, right? I mean, what is um, if you get outside of the church and outside of people with a a Christian worldview, and and there are folks who don't have a Christian worldview, but have some other um, idea of intelligent design, or that some some force, some God made the the universe. But in this secular world, I mean, kind of, what's the common idea of how the world came to be? Evolution. The Big Bang. Yeah. Boom! It big, just happened. Big Bang theory, <laughs> right? Earth. <laughs> it's so, all there. The human anatomy just. Well, evolved from yeah. monkeys. <laughs> so just by chance, and that's that's kind of the the, the starting 
you know, block of, uh, of the secular or scientific, scientific worldview. I don't know, scientific is probably not the, the right way to say it. Secular worldview is that um, all things happen by chance. Now, scientists are disagree, you know, the ones who say that everything <coughs> happened by chance, who disregard an intelligent design. Um, there's even different theories in there, but one of the common theories that's been taught over and over again, and you probably learned it in school, is um, is the Big Bang theory, and so that has to do there was some kind of material in space, and some gases uh, exploded. Um, there's no video evidence of this, I don't think. No. no. Okay, so all of it's theoretical for sure, um, but then from that, then things began to be formed, and you know, mass came together, and all the things mm. that that we know and understand began to you know. Uh, uh, form and the uh, earth and water and atmosphere and all these things began to happen and eventually uh, some of these materials uh, began to swim around as little amoeba, right? Mm -hmm. um, little single-celled organisms that then became more complex and then became even more complex and eventually crawled up out of the out of the, out of the mire, right? <laughs> um, and uh, and then became either uh, birds, dinosaurs, uh, you know. How, how are you guys on dinosaurs? I like Jurassic Park. Okay. It's actually my mom's favorite movie, the third one. Really? Mm-hmm. The third uh, of the... Lost World. Okay. Of the original. Uh, right, because the, the next, this uh, recent uh, iteration, they're about to have the third one, right? Yes. Okay, all right. Uh, like above Star Wars movies... Jurassic yes. Park, the third Jurassic Park is your mother's favorite movie. The whole series is, but the third one is the one that like we gravitate to. She towards. never ceases to surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Can, yeah. All right, I'm I'm not gonna we're not gonna go too far down in Jurassic Park thing, but um, did did do you guys like dinosaurs when you were growing up? Yeah. Yeah. I was never really into dinosaurs. Yeah. Um, I had this theory. Well, we don't get into my dinosaur theory. But um, but yeah so uh, so yeah dinosaurs and then a man and well you know lower mammals and blah blah blah, blah. eventually um, we have uh, different forms of two legged primates or you know primates that are walking on two legs eventually mm -hmm. um, Homo sapiens um, of which we are did I get that right I guess and then we have us <laughs> yeah oh, we are the Homo sapiens yes. there you go. Um, so all, but all that happened by chance, all of that, um, according to, you know, um, the secular worldview, all that happened by chance. Now there are people who are not necessarily uh, Christian worldview who have a different view, you know, the intelligent design view. Um, but just give me, um, give me kind of your, uh, thoughts on the whole idea of evolution. Um, can you be, um, you know, one of the questions I think uh, people would be interested to know is like, can I be a Christian and believe in evolution? If God created everything, and if you go back to the creation account, um, and we'll go look at the verse here that we have for this week, uh, it says, and God saw everything that he had made, and when you go through the creation account, the each day, the sun, the moon, the stars, the, the land, the sea, the atmosphere, um, the plants, um, the animals, uh, you know, birds and, and reptiles and fish, and he saw all that he had made, and it was very yeah. good. One of the things that, that says in Genesis is that um, each thing produced fruit according to its kind. So, um, so apple trees produced apple trees, and humans produced humans, and rhinoceri. Is that right? What's the plural of rhinoceros? Rhinoceroses. Okay. <laughs> Or yeah, I don't think he, I don't think he goes the I route. No, I'm it not might. sure. It might. Would you let us know in the comments what is the plural <laughs> of for rhinoceros? I personally, I don't think you should believe in evolution if you're a Christian because you're missing one entire important piece of scripture from the very beginning that we are image bearers of God and we are the only creation that are image bearers. And we didn't evolve from something that wasn't image bearers because it said we were made in his image, both male and female. And so it's a very important thing to get. And that truth trickles all the way through Scripture and applies to everyday life. 
And and aside from that, personally, I just think it's being intellectually dishonest with yourself to think something just happened. Yeah. You know, I mean, I tell you what happened. God made it happen. But for something just without God context, it's just, you know, just the 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 most common sense. You look at a cell phone. Someone made this cell phone. There's so many parts of this cell phone that come together to make this phone. And someone made it, you know. And so you look at the human body, and it's amazing as it is, and hundreds and hundreds or millennia of we're studying the human anatomy. We still don't know everything about the human body. It's amazing. It's astonishing. And only God, in my mind, and I believe, I think if I wasn't a Jesus follower, I would... I think I'd still be persuaded that, yeah, you like, it's amazing. You have children. You see the birth. You see the miracle of a child. No way that's by chance. No way. I mean, that's a perfect, fearfully, wonderfully made human being by the power of God. Yeah. And, you know, just I'll never be convinced otherwise. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's a lot to happen by accident to make up something that just really has the look of something that was planned out and designed even with the effects of with our theology even with the effects of sin in the world um it just really looks like there's a plan behind it right um so so yeah so uh are there christians who believe in evolution there are yeah. um i don't know that it necessarily uh disqualifies you i don't know that you're not getting into heaven if you think that god set yeah. The Big Bang into motion. Um, that I, I'm 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 with Garrett on that. I think that uh, the the whole of Scripture you run into some real problems with that. Um, yes, the image bearer thing. There's also some redemptive, you know, some redemption issues. Like, is there a real Adam, or did God make mankind? Right? Um, is or you know, some people have a problem with the literal Adam and Eve, and instead saying God made man and woman, kind of you know. A bunch of them all the time, you know, one time, um, where it happened through evolution. Um, I think you run into some issues there, even with redemption. I think Jesus refers back to Adam and Eve, um, yeah. and have some problems when we start disagreeing. Yeah, that's with, always with a Jesus. that's that's always a nice point. Like when you're like, well, yeah, Jesus said it. <laughs> Jesus believed it. <laughs> God in the flesh said it. <laughs> I, I'd love to debate Jesus about it. <laughs> you want to debate? Not. Yeah. Okay. No. All right, but you, yeah, I mean, you, you have to you have to believe that the Bible is true from front to back, and that it's completely inerrant in its writing. Yeah. And if you don't believe that, you do run into some personal problems, yeah. you know. But I've found it more peaceful and more satisfying to just take the Word of God from front to back, yeah. as whole, and trust in it, and yeah. it's never let me down. Well, so. and I, I think the thing that you, a lot of people don't don't think you can do is to have that um, that opinion and not just be ignorantly uh, or ignorant or blindly faithful um, a lot of people think that you know if, if I just say I believe what the Bible says and I'm trusting God at his word that that's just an ignorant faith of you know blind faith but that's not really the case I mean what we have is um, is not only our lifetime of experience in trusting God, but generations we have. Um, we have actually there's a lot of science that um, that points to intelligent design, and uh, you know there's a lot of controversy over the science that points to evolution. Um, so um, I think to say even if you know even if you're kind of on the fence about this or you feel this way or that way, um, I think. Um, in the church, I think we just need to we offer a little more grace to one another while also really digging into the scriptures and not being afraid of science. There's no need for us to be afraid of science. If God is, is true, right, if God is true to his word, then all truth is God's truth, mm -hmm. all right? And so if anything's true, it doesn't, it's not going to uh, contradict or, um, or do away with our faith. And so we don't need to be afraid of truth. Um, now, some people are going to masquerade false science as truth, but we, you know, that's not what we're talking about. So when God created the world, and this is very important, I think, um, in, the, uh, in the question or in the answer, um, it says that God created all things by his powerful word. 
Now, word is capitalized there. It's referring to Jesus, and there's several scriptures in the New Testament that say all things were made by him, through him, for him. Um, John refers to Jesus as the word. The word was with God. The word was God there in the beginning. So the uh, the triune God, the, the Trinity, God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, they're involved in the, the creation of the world, and it said it created it by his word. So what does it say in Genesis about exactly how God created? All right. How God created Yeah, like, what did oh, he do? Like day one, day two. Well, no, what did, what, what did he do? From the Hubbard. very beginning, he said, let there be light. He said, yeah, right? Yeah, he said it, yeah. He spoke, spoke right? Spoke, yeah. He didn't go to Home Depot <coughs> and get yeah. um, atoms and molecules and, you know, trees <laughs> and stuff and then began to, you know, he laid out the soil, you know, mm-hmm. all right? But he spoke, he spoke the world into existence. He spoke matter into existence. Um, out of nothing, out of nothing, he spoke the world. And it's just there's no, no one else can do that. Nothing. This no is another can. problem I have with, the the starting point of the Big Bang or whatever, you still have stuff. You still have space. You still have a universe. Like, you don't think for a second somebody made that, right? I mean, it's just such a problem from the beginning. Well, the the problem with how theoretical that is, you know, all the steps of faith that you have to have to... To um, believe and believe in the Big Bang. You know, because when you're talking about... Um, Physics, they call it theoretical physics because it is just concepts. It's n- things you can't test for the most part. It's, right. it's you know, math. Uh, listen, what I know about it, you could fit into a very small thimble. <laughs> All right, but um, but I do know that it's uh, it's very theoretical. And these people are very smart, and they work really hard on it. Um, and But um, what we want to do is take God at his word, in his, from his word, and uh, there are some very important things about um, being made in the image of God, that God spoke us into existence, um, that really play into the rest of our theology. And so it's important that we understand these concepts and pass them down to others, help to disciple in, uh, our children or our friends in these things to help them understand as well. So you guys did a great job this week um, and want you to memorize uh, the question and the answer. Once again, it is, what else did God create? And God created, oh, wasn't, I messed up. God created all things by his powerful word and all his creation is very good. Everything flourished under his loving rule. So let's work to memorize that this week and we'll be back with you next week. Actually, hold on for just a second because uh, I am going to be back with you in just a second to, uh, to pray with you. Hopefully you've been uh, putting in some prayer requests during this time. But thank you, Garrett. Thank you, Kayla. You guys did a great job. You're super smart. Proud of you. Both, let's continue to thrive. Thrive. All right, so we all had our purple shirts on, matching there, which is, uh, which is nice that we all coordinated. It was a good discussion. I enjoyed that, uh, getting a little bit into evolution and dinosaurs. We didn't, we didn't uh, get into dinosaurs, uh, whether or not if they were on the ark or not. So if you believe that dinosaurs were on the ark, go ahead and comment in. And uh, we're going to uh, pray together now. But I want to remind you about a couple of things real quick. First of all, uh, Trunk or Treat, um, come in October 31st, please. Uh, bring your candy in. Please sign up for a trunk and say, Matt asked me. That way I get credit in our little staff competition that we're doing. And the other thing um, that I want to remind you about is the 40 Days of Life uh, prayer initiative. And the day that the Fort Church has adopted to pray um, in front of Seneca, the Crisis Pregnancy Center, is this Sunday. And we're still in need for a lot of folks to, to sign up for that day. And so will you please take an hour out of your Sunday and, um, and sign up. The, the link is right there in the description of this. Um, and sign up to go and, and share it with somebody else. This is a, a great ministry, and it's a great opportunity for us to demonstrate as Christians how we value life. We've been talking about what it means to be made in the image of God and what value life has. Um, all life. All life. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter where you were born. It doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter if you're still in the womb. 
life has value. And we believe that's one of the, the um, it's one of the core things that we believe as Christians. And so we want to demonstrate that. Let's don't just say we believe something, but let's put action to it. And so this is a way that you can demonstrate how you uh, believe that life is valuable and it should be protected. So will you please click that link and go and sign up and just take an hour to to stand there, take a lawn chair, or whatever you can sit in your car. But let's um let's fill those times up on Sunday, uh, this Sunday, October the 18th, um, fill up that time from 7 to 7. So please go do that. I, I really would appreciate if you would uh, to do that. Um, let's pray together now. Uh, we've got prayer requests. Continue to pray for um, for Karen, for your mom. And uh, we've had some other uh, prayer requests for continued restoration and healing. Um, I know that there are many of you who are still healing from uh, from various things. I know we have families who have dealt with um, incredible losses in the last week. Um, there are all kinds of things that um, that we are in need of prayer for. So let's um, let's go to the Father. Will you join me in prayer um, right now, Father? Thank you um, for your word and your continued um, witness to us through your word and your Holy Spirit. God, I thank you that you've not left us alone without a witness of you and that you want us to know you, um, to live with you, to love you. God, thank you for these reminders. As we memorize these answers, it is a reminder of, of all the things that we should be um, remembering about you and about how you want to interact with us. God, we pray for these prayer requests. Pray for Karen's mom that you continue to, to provide healing for her. Give her strength. Give Karen strength as she um, and the family as they care for her. God, for those in our church family who have lost loved ones, would you give them strength? Would you help to hold them up this week? So many are healing from, um, from other things. Um, uh, there are people in the hospital right now. There are people in the rehab, I can think of, of several people. Um, God, we just ask that you would provide healing and help and restoration, strength for those who are caring for those in need. God, would you provide revival for our, um, for our community, for our church? God, we just pray for a renewed sense of your spirit within your children. God, drawing us to you and helping us to live out a life that is worthy of the calling of being called your child. God, would you please send revival by your Holy Spirit to us and to our community. Um, God, we, we just can't wait to see what you're going to do as you move through your people in these crazy times. God, you won't be held back by whatever division the world thinks um, they're going to put upon us. But God, your spirit is more powerful, and we look forward to all that you're going to do. Thank you so much. Thank you for those that are watching now and those that will watch later. Bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for watching tonight, and I will see you on Sunday. Bye, guys.